everyone. I'm, I'm just reading this inspirational food pun book, and Nat's making a bracelet. Did you make this YouTube live by accident? Yeah, did I forget to tell you? Yeah. Oh, well, I mean... Sure. Uh, my name is Haley. I'm one of your hosts for whatever this is. And I'm Natalie, your other host. Well, maybe we could play them the video we made last week. Maybe show them like, what inspires us, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. That's a great idea. So last week, we posted a video on our YouTube channel about it's a little crafting video. So we hope you guys enjoy it. Hi, Duo, and we're back with another crafting video over Zoom. That's right. We're still social distancing, as you all should, but that hasn't stopped our weekly updates. And this week, we have a super fun challenge submitted by a fan on our last video. And we'll put the link to last week's video in the comments, so make sure to check that out. Do you want to explain it, Haley? Sure thing. Our fan at Owen Loves Robots 37 commented, make something while blindfolded. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We each have supplies out in front of us and we're gonna try and make something while being blindfolded and we'll try and figure out what our creation can be used for at the end. Are you ready to start, Nat? Yes, girl, let's do this. I got my blindfold right here. Me too. All right, let's put them on. So we have 30 minutes to make something starting now. <laughs> All right, Haley, are you ready to see what we made? Yes, let's remove our blindfolds in three, two, one. Um, what is this? I don't, I don't really know. Um, they're kind of similar though. They are, we definitely made the same thing. I just, I don't really know what we could use these for. Um, <laughs> honestly, it, <laughs> it kind of looks like a slingshot. <laughs> it really does. I mean, maybe it can be like a little bag or something? Oh, yeah. Or wait, wait, wait. What if we used it as a strainer for like pasta or something? I got a good one. We could use this as a sleeping mask. Look, it would fit perfectly over both of your ears. Oh, Haley, you're a genius. We could use it as a face mask to help with the pandemic. Oh my God, you're so right. Look, they fit so perfectly. And wow, they're so convenient. Yeah, for sure. And they're also so stylish. I can't wait to wear them. This was such a fun challenge. Thanks again to our amazing and loyal followers for helping us think of new challenges and watching our weekly videos. Yes, thank you so much. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and come back for next week's video where we try to sew underwater. I'm Natalie. And I'm Haley, and we are the DIY Queen. See you next week. What's up, everyone, and welcome to this year's yearly show. Please feel free to use the chat function throughout the show. We're even going to ask for some responses later, so be on the lookout for that. Just please remember to be kind and respectful.
Since most of you are new to Northeastern, we thought it would be good to show you an actual campus tour. Not one that has any of that like educational mumbo jumbo, but one that shows you what it's actually Wait, like sorry. to go to NU. Yeah. Campus tour on accident. Okay, that's fine. So are we done? No, you're still on. Oh. <laughs> yeah, campus tours are bogus, but this one. Anyways, <laughs> like I was saying, since most of you are new to Northeastern, we thought it would be good to show you guys what an actual Northeastern campus tour is like. Not one of those with like the educational mumbo jumbo, but no. like a real campus yeah. tour. Yeah, campus tours are bogus, but this one is the real deal. Welcome to Northeastern's campus tour. I'm Amir. And I'm Drew. And as you can see here, we are six feet apart for safety. Right now we are in the historic Krentzman Quadrangle, home to the Northeastern University sign and some of the most iconic buildings on campus. These buildings include Richards Hall, L Hall, which is actually just a big entryway to Curry, and Dodge Hall, home to the business school, where you will spend 60 grand a year to learn so many goddamn acronyms. And now we take our tour to the Curry Student Center. Your on-campus club might meet here if it wasn't for coronavirus. Some other notable things about Curry is that they have a food court where really the only restaurant of note is Popeyes. And also, a little club called NUTV happens to meet here. And I am here at the library, where you will get your cardio in each day by spending 40 minutes walking around looking for a seat. Eventually, you'll make your way up to the fourth floor, which is the quiet floor, where the only sounds you'll hear are your own thoughts and the person sitting next to you going to town on a pile of Popeyes. Welcome to the ISEC Bridge, one of the newest additions to campus. It connects Snell Library to the ISEC building. It took several million dollars and almost three years to complete, yet it still looks like it's an old World War I ship. And right behind me is the ISEC Research Building, voted most beautiful building in Boston by UFO enthusiasts. And right behind it is Lightview, Northeastern's biggest off-campus, on-campus housing project. You can enjoy the benefits of living on campus for off-campus prices. <laughs> Didn't see you there, and we're here in Centennial Common. Northeastern's third most invested activity after the business school and the School of Engineering is making this place a level two arboretum, hence the trees. Some famous celebrities also come by to Centennial Common, such as Ben and Jerry. You might know them from ice cream. And that's it. And this is the Northeastern Green Line stop. The Green Line is your slow and clunky portal to the greater Boston area. 
The last time these tracks were updated, Seinfeld was still on the air. And now we're here at the freshman quad. You freshmen might spend a lot of time here, not only because a lot of the freshman dorms are here, but also two of the dining halls are here, Stetson East and Stetson West. Um, Stetson East is a little bit of a trash hole, but Stetson West is nice because it has stir fry and Chinese food. Next to Stetson West is outtakes, which you can exchange your dining swipes for little small meals that you can take on the go. You might end up using a lot of your swipes at outtakes, but I don't recommend you do because you'll end up sp spending about what equates to $17 for a cheeseburger and a soda. With housing in such short supply on Northeastern's campus, you may have to live in one of the least properties, like the classic Midtown Hotel, just a short 1.15 miles away from the nearest spot on campus. The Midtown Hotel is a quick walk away from Hastings Hall, which is a part of the original that Northeastern was founded in. Now on the Roxbury side of campus, we have International Village. International Village is one of the dorms on campus and it's kind of like its own ecosystem. You have your own dining hall, you have a gym. The only thing you don't have is a kitchen, but you know, you have your dining hall, so that's fine. You can pretty much spend the entire semester here without ever leaving your room. So that's the end of our campus tour. Thank you so much for watching. And we're excited to see you in the fall. Now, if you don't mind us, we're gonna go to our favorite club, UTV. Very soon. Wow, it was so refreshing to hear someone talk about what Eddie was actually like. Now I kind of want Popeyes. Um, okay, anyways, we see you guys are using the comment function and we need you to keep that up because we're going to do our very own special Northeastern theme Mad Libs. That's right, we need you to flood the comments with nouns, adverbs, adjectives, verbs, phrases, people, literally any word you can think of, and we're going to collect them all and randomly select some to put into our Mad Lib, which we'll read later. So start commenting away. All right, while you guys are brainstorming, let's check in with some of the other groups on campus. I've heard like a ton of rumors about what Online Rush is going to look like this year, right? Well, we were given the password for new Theta Betas, Rush, and it's happening right now, so let's tune in. Hello and welcome pledges to our first recruitment meeting for New Theta Beta. Yeah, so this year is going to be a little uh, abnormal because we can't kick it a person this year, you know, because of the virus. For some reason, we can't say the name, but it rhymes with Verona. Anyway, my name's Hunter Milliken, but you can call me Mac. And cheese. Shut up. I don't want the new recruits calling me that. Mac and cheese. God damn it. And I'm Travis Warren Dupont, the third. You can call me Trip. Most people think it's because I'm the third, but actually it's because I have three nipples. I know, pretty crazy. Just wanted to put that out there because, you know, Greek life, all about the trust. Okay, so usually we would start off the year with a Hunger Games style thing, you know, to kick off the year and uh, filter out the less desirable applicants. But we're not going to do this year because administration isn't feeling it, you know, because someone could get the virus, so. Yeah, we got to social distance and stuff. You know, Greek life is all about safety. Yeah, exactly. Except for, you know, the Hunger Games thing. Yeah, except for that. Cool. So to promote social distancing, what we're going to do is we're going to have a stage of virtual recruitment. And we're so excited to meet the new generation of betas. Betas. yep Head to our website, newthetabeta.com, and there you'll find a list of challenges for you to choose from. Yeah, and all you're going to do is you're just going to film yourself doing exactly that and upload it with your name. Exactly. So betas, best of luck. Yeah, and we can't wait to judge, uh, meet all of you. Thank you very much. What's up, dudes? I'm Chaz, and uh, I'm going to share some of my role models with you. Baby Nut, moment of silence. Mr. Peanut, who's unfortunately uh, no longer with us. Just a really classy dude. He was gone too soon, and I know that there's like the Baby Nut now. You can't replace the original. What's up, new Theta Beta? My name's Dylan, and I want to be a Beta so bad. I got a lot of energy. But anyways, 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 anyways. I got my brother over here. Dad's on camera. Thanks, Dad. And we're going to do the Trust Ball Challenge. And before I do the Trust Ball Challenge, I just wanted to say 
that I would be a great beta because I had two opposable thumbs and no criminal record. That's tight. All right, you ready? All right, I'm gonna go. Hey! Hey, try to get in the beta. So what's this thing, man? Other than that, Spider-Man, you know, there's Tobey Maguire, Tom Holland, uh, Andrew Garfield too. Speaking of Garfield, James A. Garfield, the president, Garfield the cat, love that cat, best cat. We love that cat here. All the cats from the 2019 Cats movie, the, you know, the way they look, it's just kind of mesmerizing. And I really respect that. Good evening, my name is Eliza and Ness. No relation, and I request entry to this frat. My biggest strengths are my luscious flowing hair and strong lined visage. Again, no relation. Anyways, the challenge I would be completing is the milk chug challenge. Now, as I am a member of the aristocracy, I won't be drinking this milk cold like a peasant. Many hours later. Ah, refreshing. Now, let me in, or my father, Lord Joseph Ayun Van Ness, will sue your pants off. What's up? My name is Kyle, and I will be doing the puzzle challenge today. We've had this puzzle for a while now, and I will be doing it to prove that I am a good beta. Um, sorry, this thing is just, it's very tough. It's, it's tricky. Oh shit. It's a little Batman. Anyway, um, Batman says I'd be good beta material. Martha Stewart, Snoop Dogg, Al Gore, Moses, who went up to the motherland, Cardi B, Wap Slaps, Yogi Bear, Yogi Berra, the entirety of the New York Yankees, everybody who's ever played for them. It's my favorite baseball team. My name is Justin, and I'm going to do the second challenge, which is to eat a whole jar of mayonnaise. I'm a real team player, and I think I'd make a great beta. Alright, here we go. Troy Bolton, Helen of Troy, Tony Hawk, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3, High School Musical, The Musical, The Series, and Troy Bolton. What was I supposed to be talking about again? Well, that was interesting. Hell yeah, Mac. Very interesting. We're going to have some tough decisions to make this semester, but I cannot wait to meet all of these pledges. Hmm. Okay, seriously, dude, what the fuck was that? I know, right? This is gonna be such a great year. This is the best round of betas we've ever had. What am I doing with my life? What are you talking about, bro? Seriously, what, what, what the fuck am I doing wrong? Mac and cheese. It's alright. They did their best. No, no. 2020 
is fucking canceled. Like, we, we can do this again next fall. I'm done with this. Oh, yikes. Those freshmen were certainly something. Um, I wonder how things are going for the other sororities and fraternities out there. Yeah, I hope everyone's staying safe out there. I've heard so many crazy stories about Greek life, though. Yeah. Did you know that one of the frat houses on the hill had bubbles start pouring out of every faucet? The entire house filled with suds. The craziest part? No one was home. What? That's nuts. I've read so many things about Northeastern on Reddit recently. Someone created a whole thread about NU-related conspiracy theories, and I just, I can't believe them. No, I swear they're true, but I bet some of our freshmen have never heard of them. Mm. I heard that there's a ghost of a student who couldn't find the exit roaming Lake Hall. Wait, don't you mean Holmes Hall? Okay, yes, Meserve, Holmes, Lake, and Nightingale, but it's all one connected labyrinth. That's pretty spooky. I mean, I'm not so upset about classes being online anymore, but that's not even the scariest one I've heard. You know the arch by Snell Library? The one that lights up? Yeah. I heard a rumor that every time you walk under it, President Amun steals a full minute of your life. He already stole my tuition. Now he wants to steal my life? Capitalism has gone way too far. Speaking of capitalism, did you hear about the conspiracy with Bose? It's too crazy to explain. Let's just roll the clip. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to your favorite half of the uh, aforementioned vlog boys and your favorite hole of my new baby, which is, of course, my conspiracy theory channel. Now, um, I'm back with another pretty spicy conspiracy theory, and I've got two words for you. Fireworks and vertical integration. Now, you may be thinking, that's not two words, and I would be thinking, that's what they want you to think. Now, if you recall, earlier this year, the country was swept by a wave of fireworks going off every single night in metropolitan areas across the country, from Santa Monica to the North End. It was everywhere, folks, everywhere. And I have it on good authority that audio equipment giant Bose was actually the ones behind this fireworks snafu, if you will, and I will. Bose was behind the snafu. But I would direct you back to our two words, vertical integration. Now, vertical integration is basically what happens when one company owns the entire production and consumption process for a consumer. So, I mean, it would be like how if I eat an entire bag of pizza bagels in one night, and that's my business if I do, I also take a brand of antacids that is owned by the same company. Or how, I don't know, the Girl Scouts sell cookies every spring, and then one fall they decide to open up a weed dispensary right next to where they sell a lot of cookies. It happened. Look it up. That is what my friend, who, mind you, has a degree in advanced entrepreneurial management at the Bezos Institute for Anti-Competitive Research, calls another two-worded term, monopolistic practices. Similar vein, how there's like six food companies that own every food anyone eats, and none of them have figured out how to make Dippin' Dots a thing yet. But back to the matter at hand, fireworks and Bose headphones. You know what no one does anymore? No one flies anymore, okay? No one takes planes. Like, for those of you that don't remember in the before times, planes were those loud things you saw in the sky and confused for Superman. They used to move so many people on those things, and now no one takes them anymore. Because I guess they're like, scared of the deadly lung virus, which makes sense. But no one flies anymore. So there's no noise in the sky, and there's nothing being confused for Superman, but that's more of a secondary thing here. There's really just no noise in the sky. And so if you're a noise-canceling headphone maker, like, think about it, Bose, you're following me now. A noise canceling headphone maker needs noise to sell the headphones. If there's no noise, I can take off my headphones and be fine. So what do the big high ranking brand executives at Bose do? They get in their cousin Bobby's pickup truck. They start ripping some cigarettes on the drive up to New Hampshire. They find the cheapest fireworks they can find at an outlet joint in New Hampshire. They get a ton of them. They bring them back to Boston. They set them off here. They cause a lot of noise, a lot of kerfuffle. And all of a sudden, people are like, oh my god, I need my noise-canceling headphones. I got to cancel this noise. There's too much noise. I need to cancel all of it. And so what do they do? That's right, folks. They buy Bose noise-canceling headphones. And, oh, by the way, since, you know, we need more evidence of this conspiracy, guess where Bose is headquartered? Right here, Boston, Massachusetts. And you know what else? What makes it even better? Their headquarters? Top of the mountain. You know what else is on top of the mountain? The 
Eye of Sauron. I'm not going to say that Bose, the audio equipment giant, is somehow related to Sauron, the evil god figure from Lord of the Rings that was a little bit of an allegory for some geopolitical stuff that was going on at the time the book was written, but I'm not not saying that. I'm just saying they have a propensity for mountains. Bose headquarters on top of a mountain. The Eye of Sauron on top of a mountain. They're on the same level, folks. Hey, did you order some sandwiches? Who, me? No, I didn't order sandwiches. Why would I... Well, I have this bag of two Italian subs addressed to you from the Bose Corporation, so here you go. Okay, um, <clears throat> you know what? Uh, yeah, we're, we're just going to cut this. We're going to strike that. Um, we're not going to be publishing this one. This one will not be seen by anybody. Uh, just forget, really, that I said anything. I mean, forget that I said anything about uh, Bose, the company that makes fine audio equipment such as noise-canceling headphones uh, and any connections that they may or may not allegedly have to fireworks because those are purely coincidental if at all existent and they're not existent um so yeah no it's um if the the good people at bose hear this um i just want to say i have the utmost respect for your sound equipment also your sandwiches look surprisingly tasty please bose if you're hearing this just let my family go please well that was um, interesting, but I gotta say, it was pretty convincing. I had totally forgotten about planes too and flying. I mean, what's up with that? Yeah. All right, well, it's finally time to get what you've all been waiting for. Remember our comment section Mad Lib? Well, we're about to read that right now. So, uh, let's see what you guys came up with. <clears throat> One ravenous day, Harry Styles walked to class on his first day of school at WAP University. His day began when he woke up to his roommate vibing at 5 in the morning. Harry Styles was dry and leapt out of bed when they went into the bathroom and saw an exquisite Travis Scott burger in the shower and immediately left. Harry Styles then started his meow to class. They felt very cool because they had heard rumors that Professor Lil Xan was bubbly. As they crossed Huntington, they ran into Garfield and said, Ben Shapiro's wife! Could this day get any worse, they screamed. Harry Styles sang in a Curry Student Center, and when they walked into class, he saw an educational tyrant. Feeling sad, Harry Styles muttered, I'm Kyle. I'm 19. That sounds like a pretty typical first day of school, in my opinion. Do you have any first year horror stories, Haley? Oh, for sure. You know that group on campus, Survivor and You? Yeah. Well, they're like super intense, right? So I was walking to my first class and I had to pass through Centennial. And they were playing some game that involved the Frisbee. And it hit me so hard in the face that I fell over. None of them even apologized. They all just came running over trying to get the Frisbee so they could win. Oh, I, um, I didn't know that happened to you. I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, anyways, I wonder what Survivor and you is doing in the pandemic. I mean, are they doing the games and challenges in person? I have no idea, but with the pandemic, I'm sure Survivor is going to feel as real as ever. Hello, and welcome back to the seventh season of... Hello, and welcome back to the seventh season of Northeastern Survivor. But you see, this season we're introducing a brand new twist that's dramatically altering how the game is played. You see, this season, our contestants are going through actual survival challenges. You know, kind of like the actual show. Only, we're in the middle of a global pandemic, and it's not just the contestants, it's, uh... Well, uh, it's everybody. So let's see how well our contestants are adjusting to these unforeseen and unprecedented circumstances. So, I found an immunity today. I don't think anyone saw me take it, um, but it's eight ounces of hand sanitizer. I did not know that there were bottles this big left. This is like a huge deal. Immunities this season have become super important because, you know, this could be the thing that potentially saves me from getting corona and obviously saves the people that I could have spread it to. Still trying to decide whether or not I should tell Jeremy. Resources are scarce. But, we're also in a bubble together, so if he gets it, I'm kinda screwed. So, I think I am gonna have to tell him, you know? Having each other's backs is really the only way we're both gonna make it out of this. 
Alex told me about their immunity today. They said they want to share with me. They know I ran out last week and I haven't been able to get any since. People panic buying and hoarding could be saving lives by spreading their resources, but no. Instead, Alex has to ration their own. I feel bad, but if I get it, they will too. So I have to use it. Some of the other alliances just aren't taking things very seriously. I noticed Jenna and Sarah eating lunch with a group of friends the other day. They are definitely threats. I can't believe Jenny and Sarah went to a frat party this weekend. Oh shit, there's the heathens now. Get back, heathens! Yeah, we were at that party. What about it? Josh said that if I drank enough, the elf would kill any virus that entered my system. Haven't like eight people from that party tested positive? Yeah, but I was totally blitzed, so I don't need to get tested. The Malibu definitely killed it all. Hello, um, you left your cam- you left your camera? Whatever. <laughs> that party was totally banging, and Josh is so cute. I should text him and see what he's doing later, if you catch my drift. Don't put that in. <laughs> Alright, as many of you know, both Sarah and Jenny have tested positive for COVID-19 and are now in isolation. And that means there are now six of you left. And now it's time to vote off one of your fellow Islanders. One at a time, you'll each cast a vote by sending me the video clip that you recorded earlier. All right, Alex? Owen has to go. He's just the lives of faculty, staff, and students just so he could sell a book. Natalie? Owen, I mean, the reasoning is obvious. Empty your pockets, please. Jeremy? I said motherfucking too. It's expensive and it prioritizes science and tech once again over the arts and social sciences at this school. Emma? I am. Uh, the book thing. I mean, come on, man. Tess. I'm voting for Aoun. I mean, he's clearly biased in his love for CS and engineering. What about social sciences and Cam D? And finally, Emily. I'm voting Aounov because he wore a mask with his own face on it. I mean, what the heck was that? All right, I'm looking through, and it seems like the person voted off the island is... Aoun. All right, very funny, everyone. But also, kind of justified, he sucks. Well, you know what? Clearly, clearly voting isn't going to work this time. So, I'm proposing a new twist right now that's going to dramatically change up the game. From now on, this game is survival of the fittest. The last one to test positive for COVID-19 wins. Good luck, everyone. So things are getting pretty bad. Um, the cameraman resigned. <laughs> Our host resigned. Um, but we decided to stick through with the rest of the season. There's only about four of us left. Um, but I'm not sure that I can continue doing this here in Boston. At least not in the city. This season has always been so much more than a game. Well, it's reality for us, you know? We have to survive in the pandemic. So, I've been contemplating, packing my things, moving into the woods. You know, they all said it was gonna spike in the winter. <laughs> but no one really knew how much. Um, and it's way worse than we thought it would be. As the weather gets warmer, Maybe it's a chance I have to take. Go out to the woods. Try and get through it. And about a month ago, I ended up coming into the woods to isolate from the city. I packed up some clothes, canned food, ramen, whatever I could find and I've been camping out here. I'm starting to run low on supplies and so I'm gonna need to go back to the city. Um, pretty nervous about it, but I need to see what cases are like now anyways. I've met a few other people here in the woods. Um, I just hope that, that I'm able to, to stay here to make it work.
Well, that was rather unexpected. Um, I don't, I don't know who that Alex person was at all. Um, but if you saw that video, no, you didn't. Moving on, we just received an urgent, super real message from President Aoun himself. And we're going to read it out loud to you all. Dear Northeastern students, I am writing to inform you of some updates to our community. I recognize that times are challenging, but I am confident that our university and our community will emerge stronger and even better prepared to address the world's grand challenges. I hope you all have settled in after the craziness of moving in and getting tested. Rest assured that every aspect of how the university operates is being evaluated in the context of our new reality. These are unprecedented times, and now that you have all moved in, we've realized that your safety is our number one priority. So now that we've collected your tuition and housing money, we ask that you all take the weekend to gather your things and move off campus. Hashtag stay apart together. The closure of our campuses does not mean the closure of our minds. Northeastern students are agile. Consider this experiential learning for when you have to move back home after graduation because of the current economic state. But don't worry. Because of our curriculum's focus on humanics, you are robot-proof, and your parents will not be able to replace you with the robot. I don't think they even make robots that hotbox their rooms, disrespect their mothers, and eat three sleeves of Oreos a day. Most importantly, thank you to Northeastern Television Club, also known as NUTV. This show is an important part of Welcome Week, and I'm pleased to see that the state of the world has not stopped them from praising my glorious reign over campus. NUTV is one of my favorite clubs on campus, and I hear they're constantly talking about me. Fantastic work, truly. Anyways, ta-ta for now. Suck it, Huskies, and see you next fall. Wow. That was, that was a strong message. But for legal reasons, that was a joke. You know, Nat, I wonder how the student athletes are holding up during these times. Yeah, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know anything about that. Due to the current climate in the world, major sports leagues have been getting canceled. However, socially distanced sports like cornhole have begun to thrive. This interview is with Northeastern Premier Cornhole player Nat. Tell me a, bit, a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm Nat. I'm a third year student at Northeastern, and I've been on the cornhole team since my first day freshman year. I knew as soon as I saw it for a welcome week that I was going to join. And it really changed my life. Like, I didn't know who I was before cornhole, and I kind of just signed up because it looked fun. And now I'm a cornhole master. Every single day I go out and practice cornhole. Morning, afternoon, night. Sometimes I even skip class. So you could say I'm, as I said, a cornhole master. How did you transition from the Northeastern cornhole team to the professional circuit? Honestly, it was pretty easy. My first year, I was so good. They were like, Nat, you got to go professional. Like, you are so good for the Northeastern team. Like, you have to continue. You have to move on. And so that's what I did. I made a few phone calls. I showed them some of my video reels. And they were like, we just have to have you. So honestly, it was pretty easy. But I guess it's not that easy for everyone. So can you tell me a little bit about your training for Cornhole? Yeah, for sure. I start up by getting really early, up really early, um, usually five or six. I practice for two to three hours. Go to some of my classes if I feel like I don't need more practice, which sometimes I don't because I just have such a good morning practice. But anyways, I'll come in around lunchtime. I will also practice. And then after classes, I will do a workout and then practice some more. So mainly just practicing a lot. For meals, I, strict, I stay on a really strict diet. So I'll start with oatmeal in the morning and I'll sprinkle some corn in it, you know, for good luck. And then for lunch, I will have um, corn on the cob, usually just that. Sometimes I make it spicy with some street corn. And then at night, I let myself go a little bit and I'll have something like tacos with corn, um, chili with corn, Sometimes corn on the cob again. It depends how I'm feeling, like if I need to diet. So, yeah, I mean, it, when you're a pro athlete, you need to stick to a strict schedule and to a strict diet. So I just take it really seriously. So what words of inspiration do you have for cornhole hopefuls? Hmm. Well, 
this is always what I say. A lot of the other professionals also say is that if you want to be a master at cornhole, you have to and I hate to say it like this, but either you're born with it or you're not. You'll know if you can feel it. Wow. Um, I didn't know cornhole was so competitive. Um, that nap person sounds like she's pretty good at cornhole, though. Um, okay. Wonder who that girl was. Apparently not you. It's definitely not weird. Uh, speaking of things that are weird, all those Northeastern Facebook groups. Oh my gosh, there's so many of them. I can't keep up. Keep up. I do love NEU polls, though, and especially NEU polls, too. Very true. And just like Nat and Natalie, there is no relation between the two groups. We actually pulled a few questions that were asked by real Northeastern students in NEU polls and turned it into our own version of Family Feud, or as one might say, NEU Feud. Anyways, we're going to read the question, and you guys have to comment in what you think the most Northeastern students voted for. And as they're guessed correctly, we'll reveal the answers. All right, first question. What building have you cried in? <laughs> Anyone? Nothing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, the number one answer is in with IV. Yes, and then the number two answer is in with Snell. Number four is in with Curry. You're still missing three. Oh, wait. Shulman is number six. Ryder is number three. East Village is number five. And that's all of them. All nice. right, our next question. Which Duncan location on the Boston campus got the most votes from Northeastern students? There's four this time. <laughs> We're waiting for those responses. Yes, yeah, Shulman is the number one answer. Richards is number three. Ruggles is number four. You, yeah, there's another one. It's not Huntington. There's one more. A pickle, truly. Yes, yes. the number two answer with Hayden. You may be wondering, are Hayden and Richards the same Duncan? Yes, they are, <laughs> but we don't have very big brains in Northeastern, so it's okay. <laughs> right, so you guys answered that like super fast. Haley, we totally forgot though. Most of the viewers are new to Northeastern and probably don't even know what the Facebook groups are. Well, we could just show them that video, you know, the one news made? Oh about yeah. All the Facebook groups. Let's play now. A new email from the office of the president. Oh, it's, it's a video? And to maintain social distancing, this year our club fair will be held digitally. Using the same technology we used to develop our trademarked new flex, we will digitally connect you with many clubs in order to find the best fit for you. Traditional club fair. This is going to be a disaster. Might as well get this over with. And you crush it. Am I reading that correctly? Oh, pause. King Husky, you up? Uh, hello? Oh. Oh. You're cute. You actually look a lot like another cutie I spotted at Merino. Maybe you know them? They were wearing exercise clothes. Probably a student. You know who I'm talking about. That could literally be anyone. Ugh. I'll just ask my fellow romantics. Cutie from Merino has been running through my mind. Put the dumb in dumbbell, cause they was dummy thick. Aren't these posts anonymous? They'll respond to the post to let me know if their DMs are open. And then I'll reach out. Need to have faith in the power of love. Well, good luck with that. <coughs> Any you polls? They really have a group for everything, don't they? Hi, welcome to NEU polls. Are you a new student? 
Please select either Udent, Nudent, or Nuance. What does Udent and Nudent mean? Oh, I'm sorry, I should explain. Here at NU Polls, we like to shake up our answer choices a little bit. So instead of just the usual yes and no, we combine them with the words a little bit. So like in this case, yes and student make Udent, and no and student make Nudent. Does that make sense? Why is there nuance to this question? I'm either a student or I'm not. Actually, I don't, I don't really know. Anyways, stop. Don't listen to anything that they have to say. Who are you? <laughs> Only Northeastern's second most popular polls group, NEU Polls 2 Electric Boogaloo. Wait, there are two polls groups? Actually, there's three. Why is there more than one? Who was that? Shh, we don't talk about Sneaky Husky. Um, okay, but I still don't get why there's more than one polls group. Oh, okay, that's it. You guys are literally just a carbon copy of us. Everything we do is just the same. You guys don't even understand. We're just no trying to do a bunch kind of stuff. We're trying to fill a void. It just doesn't even make sense. You guys just have no reason to exist. You guys took your back in the community. We're here now. Why? Northeastern has gamers. <laughs> understand what you're saying. Oops, sorry about that. Now you should understand me. What are your turnip prices today? I bought mine at 94 bells, so I'm hoping to do well in the stock market. There's no way I could sell my turnips for less than 600 bells. Turnips? Bells? What? Oh, are you looking for something else? Raymond is in boxes if you want him. You just have to pay the right price. Who is Raymond? Can he breathe in the box? Oh, don't be silly. Raymond is a cat. <laughs> Oh, also, do you have any of those ironwood DIYs? I've been looking everywhere for them. I'll trade you for some of the items that I have on my island. You live on an island? Yes, feel free to stop by. My Dota code is 1NUTV, and I'm closing my gates at around noon, so feel free to stop by. Ta-ta. Animal Crossing. Huh, I hope she makes it to the other side. A meme collective. How cringy is this gonna be? I spoke too soon. Me Collective is our game. Making fun of Northeastern is our game. Do you have a grudge against the university? Who doesn't? Point taken. Here at the Meme Collective, we are dedicated to only posting good content. Hey, that's, that's pretty funny. I know. You want more? This is such a classic. This is so relatable. This is so new. You do get them, right? I mean, I've never stepped foot on campus. But you just like, no, like, Isaac to the Yes Tree, the XL Plus, Chicken Lose, Connor Larkin, Rip, President Joseph Ali Un, where are you at? And you kidding me with any flex, like, and you for real? I seriously don't understand a word you're saying. You do. In your hearts. Yep, sure, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna go now. <laughs> Post the fits and go? Wait, is this frozen? Okay, please don't I didn't break this. No, no babe, I'm frozen. Do you like my outfit? You're just wearing a t-shirt and jeans. Well, yeah, but it's a look. I call it Wednesday. Yeah, it's nice, I guess. Oh, thank you. Wait, what is this? So what is this even for? Oh, oh my god. Queen, you and your top are both too cute. We just post and admire different people's outfits since, you know, being at home is no excuse not to look like us. Gotcha. Oh, hey, I like your dress. I like your dress, queen? Oh. I see you too, I guess. Any, any food? How do I pronounce this? Oh, don't think about it too hard. Why not take a break from studying, and behold, why have some boring microwave food when you could be cooking? But I like my hot pockets. With quarantine, we have nothing but time, and an endless need to feel productive. But, instead of feeling down, we make totally fabulous food. Oh my gosh, that looks delicious. Do you have anything? I have some popcorn? Ah, oh, it's... It's definitely food. <clears throat> now, if you could excuse me, I'll have to work my newest project. Oh, what is it? I'm so glad you asked. 
I have been inspired to create new art. And that art, well, shall be dubbed Oreo Scrambled Eggs. Oh, oh dear God. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Huh? Why are you bullying me, OP? I didn't even say anything mean. What are wild confessions anyways? Why should I have to educate you? You know Google exists. This is the club fair? Wild confessions is where huskies can anonymously post whatever they want, really. I didn't really let you guys post anything in here. Especially my sizzling political commentary. Oh boy. Sometimes I just post the most controversial thing I can think of to see people argue in the comments. This might not be the right place for me. Oh, sweetie, I'm glad I got to you. Uh, what? I was talking with your father, and we're just not sure if this school is quite right for you. I don't know you. <laughs> Silly, of course you do. I'm Northeastern University Parent Group. I have the combined knowledge of over 5,000 parents who weren't quite ready to let their little birdies fly. Is this, is this all Northeastern students do? Are there no other ways to build community? Well, there is something else. But it's no place for a first year. I don't even use Facebook that much. I'm not sure I can do this. Oh my god, when will this end? NUTV? Which Facebook group are you supposed to be? Oh no, we're not a Facebook group. Well, we do have one, which you should definitely join. But we're just a club. Wait, what? You're actually an on-campus club? Finally. You should join. We're the only student-led video production club. We have three departments, news, sports, and entertainment. But between us, news is definitely the best department. Hmm, that, that sounds cool. I'll definitely check it out and come to meetings. Sounds great. Be sure to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with the Husky update. My name is Saki, and thanks for watching. <laughs> what are you? Arts, media, and design. Your line would have been faster. Pay 50 grand for music industry? Take a trip to the west side. West side. I didn't even know some of those groups existed. Yeah, I, um, I'm actually joining some of them now. Wow, now your bracelet looks so good. Thanks, I'm surprised I finished it so quickly. I know, and just in time for the end of the show. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked any of the videos or bits we did today, please check out NUTV. We're the only video production club on campus, and we have a place for everyone in our three departments, sports, news, and entertainment. You can check out our website, northeasterntv.com, for more information on departments, meeting times, and to sign up for our mailing list. Thank you all for joining us tonight. We hope you enjoyed this very special virtual yearly show. Hopefully your virtual classes have a higher production value. Suck it, Huskies! Huskies. <laughs> I didn't start in the right place. Are we done? I don't know. You can cut it. <laughs> Oh, I'm